Hello, welcome to episode 13 of Will's whatever it's called. All right, so I'm starting a new series. This is my part one of the new series, which is called Will Writes Books. Not a book, books, because I'm going to write 11 books this year, 2024. It would be 12, but we're at the end of January. And for each book, I'm going to finish the book. I'm going to write each book on average within a month. It, you know, I, I didn't say that I have to, at the end of each month, submit the book, but that's roughly my intention. You know, if if uh, if there's some something that happens where, you know, I'm working on one book and, you know, polishing the last part of another book and there's a little slippage and I can catch up, yeah, whatever. I, I didn't say it'd be one book per month. It'd be an average of one book per month. That's the important thing. Um, yesterday, I, wrote, I made one video. Uh, Mondays tend to be my busiest day, and, and this Monday was especially busy. So I only did one video, so I'm already two videos behind. So I'll see if I can make three videos today, and ideally four or even five. Um, but I'd like to do four videos today if possible. And even just doing three videos on a weekday would be uh, good. Okay, so I did three three videos on Saturday and three videos on Sunday. Uh, so that's great, but those are Saturdays and Sundays. And um, I mean, I still had things going on. I was actually doing research, uh, those sorts of things, and hanging out with friends. But, you know, trying to trying to get, get up to speed with my videos. And like I said, I want to make 11 books, and I want to... Uh, finish them, <clears throat> sorry, finish them, submit them to a publisher, you, you know, each one of them. So the basic plan would be one book per month. Uh, submit that book, you know, by the end of the month, or maybe what I do is I finish writing the book, and then I submit maybe uh, the beginning of the next month as I'm finishing, or sorry, as I'm starting the next book, you know, maybe I submit I'm not sure. Uh, I'll figure out that process, right? So the, the first time I submit something, it might be a little awkward. The first two or three times might be a little awkward. And then when I get rejections, uh, when I resubmit the books, then we'll figure it out. But that's the basic plan. Um, okay, so we're starting with the blank desktop. Uh, so starting from scratch. And something I learned from Dan Friedman is it's helpful when you're writing books to have your own set of rules or guidelines, or as, you know, sort of part of your philosophy to, you know, help you with your own point of view. You know, like Alan Kay says that point of view is worth 80 IQ points. I think this is mostly so that, you know, you, you can make fewer decisions or when you have to make a decision, you can remember by your rules or guidelines, um, you know, which way you should go. So if you look at the the little books that, that Dan's created, like Little Schemer and Reason Schemer and all those, uh, there's a philosophy behind those books. If you pick up a little book, there are certain elements of of those books that that make it a little book. And each little book also is a little different from from the other little books. So, you know, it's not like the rules <clears throat> have to be uh, <clears throat> carved in stone for each book. These are guidelines. Uh, but if you're, you know, if you have a strong sense of what you want to do, having those guidelines can be helpful. So we're going to create some guidelines for ourselves. All right. So, uh, Emacs buffer, great. Now, where are we going to save our rules? Well, we need a place to write our book. So how about this? I'll stick it in. Oh, yeah. We got uh, programming languages series. Okay. So let's go in here. And let's do uh, books. All right. And we're going to have book one. All right. I won't create all 11 directories right this second, but... Um, you know, we can already start building a little inf inf uh, infrastructure. Uh, book topics dot txt. Okay, topics. 
topics for books. And here we have book one. Topics and titles, I'll say. So book one, I like I already said, is going to be, what is it? Um, it's like strategies for idiosyncratic and creative thinking. There we go. Book two. I don't know. All right. And then we have up to book 11. All right. So we're starting to build some infrastructure here. Book topics. And let's see. What else do we need? We need some rules. Okay. Rules for writing I don't know books okay so these are general rules and then each book um, can override those rules okay or modify those a little bit all right so how we're gonna do how about for will writing books all right so the first rule is we you know follow uh, Heinlein's? I think I spelled Heinlein right. Heinlein's five rules for writing. Okay, so that's the that's rule number one, and uh, you know we'll get to those five rules. But basically, the most important rules that he talks about are write. And then you're going to finish, and then you're going to submit to a publisher, and then you're going to keep submitting until it eventually gets published. And he claims if you follow these rules to the letter, it will happen. And he also says that you don't revise, um, you don't write extra drafts unless required. You don't, you know, you're not doing that sort of thing unless um, required or requested by the publisher. And even then, you might disagree and say, I'm not going to make those changes. But uh, his, his part of his idea was that if you keep editing things, first of all, you won't finish and you will be writing less. And then secondly, if you, know, you, you can lose the life of whatever you're writing. And I, and I noticed this when I was making the first couple of videos where I do 76 takes or, or whatever. By this at the time I did the 76 take, whatever enthusiasm I had or spontaneity was largely gone. Okay, so you know, that, that's an impressive thing I think about Broadway actors, let's say, or vaudeville performers back in the day who were doing the same act, you know, hundreds or thousands of times, and they had to make every single performance, sometimes, you know, multiple performances in the same day, they had to make every single performance look like it was the first time they'd ever done it with the same energy and the same surprise and reactions, you know, that's amazing. That's an art. That's an art that I don't know how to do. What, what I will say is, you know, I can talk about mini Canron. I could talk about Japan. I could talk about lots of things and share them with other people with the enthusiasm as if I've never told this about this before, or maybe an enthusiasm of someone who all, you know, uh, just can't stop talking about it. It's probably more likely, but I can never talk about any of those things twice the same exact way. Every time it's going to be a little different. So anyway, those, that's the, the first thing is we're going to follow the rules for writing because the point of this exercise is to have finished books. Let's have finished books submitted for publication, uh, you know, sort of best effort. Okay, that's the first rule. Second rule, 11 books submitted two publishers by the end um, of 2024. Now that doesn't mean that the books will be published. You know, who knows? Maybe they're all rejected or maybe a publisher says, sure, um, but it won't get published until 2025 or we want you to make these changes. So that's all fine. That, that has nothing to do with it. The point is the books have to be submitted 
Okay, they can be rejected. Um, and by following Heinlein's rules, if a book's rejected, resubmit. Okay, and you know, eventually we end up with some press that will publish. Uh, you know, there may maybe they're uh, light on books to publish, and they'll publish whatever, whatever that week. Um, and you know, get lucky that way. But uh, Heinlein, at least when he was writing these rules, which was you know, uh, sixty years ago, would claim that if you just kept submitting, eventually someone would publish it. And I think that's true. Maybe the format's different now. Maybe it turns into something that's more like an article in a collection or something like that, or an official blog. Who knows? I don't know. I, I just don't have enough experience. That's the other thing is that I will gain experience into this whole process. Number three, all books are licensed under Creative Commons. So th this is one of the things that is important to me um, that if I'm trying to share things, I want as many people as possible to to benefit from them or to read them who are interested. I mean, it's not like I want everyone to read everything I write, but if someone's interested, they I would like them to be able to get a copy of it. And there's a trade-off here because I, I do think publishers have valuable services and it's nice being able to go to the bookstore and find the book. You know, unfortunately, there aren't that many bookstores around, traditional style bookstores. Um, but but that, that's a nice thing. And also, you know, having libraries, you know, have copies of the book. Uh, that's nice. Having Library of Congress or whatever have a copy, you know, archival, that's nice. Um, having having uh, some advertising, you know, from professional organizations, like if MIT Press pro publishes a book, you know, first of all, there are a bunch of libraries that buy every book from MIT Press, apparently, and the Library of Congress will, of course, get a copy. Um, but, you know, MIT Press also has a newsletter and they have a store and all that. So, you know, that this, those are additional ways for people to learn about books and you know, maybe they're in bookstores. So that, that I think is a valuable service. And MIT Press in particular, and I think there may be other publishers, has, at least in the past, and, and I think recently, been willing, maybe not super excited, but been willing to publish books covered under like a Creative Commons license. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, that probably is going to have a, a pretty big impact on which publishers would be willing to publish the book. But I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens. Hey, if everyone rejects it, just keep submitting. And then who knows, maybe some <laughs> free and open source journal will publish it. I don't know. Who, who knows? But that's important to me, Creative Commons. I've got two books or two editions of a book from MIT Press, Reason Schemer. It came out 20, 2005, 2018. Neither of those are under a Creative Commons license. And while I'm glad that people have enjoyed that book, uh, and I think MIT Press did do a pretty good job of of getting that book out there, especially the first edition. Um, you know, it, th there are issues that, um, you know, I would like to have a Japanese edition, for example. And maybe there'll be a Japanese edition, but, you know, to get a Japanese edition, I need the permission of MIT Press. And, you know, I mean, the, you know, they have the copyright. We sign the copyright over to them, all that. There is a way, by the way, after a book goes out of print, it's possible uh, with publishers for the authors to get back the copyright. And so you you will find with some older books, especially older academic books, that the, the uh, writers of those books maybe puts an open source copy, or sorry, a Creative Commons license or whatever copy of it on their uh, maybe homepage, that kind of thing. So that's great. Um, so, you know, maybe that's something worth doing for the first edition of The Reason Schemer, which is now, uh, I believe, out of print. I don't think MIT Press is printing. I don't even know if, maybe because of print on demand, things have changed. But because there's a second edition, I don't even know if you can get the Kindle. And also the Kindle edition of the first edition was messed up. So anyway, these are all things you <laughs> that come up when you're working on a book. Um but 
anyway, I'm not going to budge on this. All, all the books are going to be Creative Commons, okay? Um, but I'm still going to try to get them published. Okay, so that, um, that that sort of makes me play for real. Okay, so I um, I could write any anything and make a PDF and say, hey, I, I have a book, and sure. Um, but if I actually get it published from, say, an academic publisher, you know, it makes me go through the steps and have, have an editor take a look at it, and they'll want changes. So, you know, it sort of makes it more real. And hopefully the end product would be better, and then people would benefit from it. Uh, they could benefit from it anyway, but I want to go through those steps. So I thought about this a long time and I thought, you know, the last two steps of Heinlein where you actually submit it to publishers. And then part of also is just dealing with the rejection. All right. So I want to get over any sort of fear and also the annoyance because I have, you know, dealing with MIT press, I have had a degree of annoyance when they would say, well, we want you to write down who you think the audience is and stuff like that. All right, I just want to get over that. It's like, okay, sure, no problem. Um, you know, get into the sort of factory mindset if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so, oh yeah. Um, having to do with number three, all books are on my GitHub um, account. There we go. Like it has to do with the uh, three. Once again, this might affect, you know, whether or not a publisher will publish them. Oh, well, you know, I didn't say I'd get the books published. I said I'd submit them to the publishers. All right. Uh, what else? Okay. Mm. Okay. Here, here is one. Um, avoid falling into the LaTeX tar pit. All right. So I want to avoid falling into the LaTeX tar pit. Uh, especially for the first edition of the Reason Schemer, I can't even imagine the amount of time I spent wrestling with LaTeX to try to do <laughs> sort of heroic types of uh, setting. I'm just not going to do that. Um, and in fact, in the second edition, we backed off from that because it, it 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 was pretty cool in some ways, but I think it caused probably more issues for the reader than it helped with. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, so how about, how about basic, um, high level intent, you know, high level schedule is start a book on the first of the month. <clears throat> um, Let's see. And once you start, once I start, once I, um, well, you know, uh, how, how to say this, you know, finish the book, <laughs> finish the book on the topic chosen. Finish writing the book on the topic chosen by the end of the month. Okay. And then, uh, whoops. And then after that, um, okay, what about submitting? Well, actually, I'm going to say submit book to... <clears throat> Uh, publisher by end of the month. End of the month. All right, so let's let's aim for that. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? That might be it. That might be all the rules that are kind of the high level things. Um. Okay. So so number f this this one. I'm gonna. That's kind of lower priority. Okay. I think it's important um, to avoid falling in the LaTeX tar pit, but, but that's not a rule in quite the same way. So, so these first five are rules. You know, these are real rules. And then here is, you know, this is more like a reminder to self. Um, 
Okay, avoid falling into the latex tar pit. All right, which I've been prone to do. Okay, so technically, I still have two more days um, before February first to to begin um, to begin the first book. I, uh, you know, I might start working on it today or tomorrow. Just because, oh, 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 there's another important, another important one. Okay, forgot about this. This is important. Um, record writing the book. All right. Okay, this is, this is important. I want to, I want to actually uh, make videos of the writing of the book. And for this one, you know, to the extent possible. Okay. I'm going to maybe give myself a little wiggle room there. Um, if, if for some reason, well, I don't know. No, I'm not going to give myself any wiggle, uh, wiggle room at all. This is not about wiggle room. Record all writing um, of the book. That's right. And put on my channel. Now, what I will say there is if I have conversations with a publisher and emails and things like that, I'm not going to record any of that or, or publish of that, that, you know, just private, just for privacy things, but I could talk at high level about what I heard, you know, that's different. Uh, but you know, names and showing emails, I'm not going to do any of that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm going to record the writings of the book. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to obviously be thinking about it, you know, during the days, that sort of thing. So I can't record all of that, but you can already see that my rules, you know, I thought a little bit about these rules, but um, coming up with these rules semi in real time. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, uh, I just point out here, <laughs> this is important to me. Um, this is part of the getting over perfectionism, okay? Which is, um, I'll start a book. I mean, many times I've started books. I've got notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of my starting books. And ask some of my friends, I could tell you about a bunch of the books I started and then quit. Uh, so I, it's, I've got lots of topics. And the thing is I'd start writing in a day or two or an hour or two later. I'd say, oh, you know, actually there's a better topic, you know? So I want to avoid that. I've got 11 books this year. So, hey, you know, if, I, if I've got another idea, that's fine. That will be another book that will go into the ideas file, right? So that could go into the, you know, book topics file. So if I have ideas um, for the other books, I mean, I'll just go ahead and, and write these down, okay? So I don't know what the books are going to be yet. Uh, I only know the first one. I, I, I have some ideas, and I have some ideas about how to go about generating ideas. If you have ideas for books, you know, uh, please let me know. Um, you know. I'll think about this a little more myself, and maybe I'll... But in any case, once I start writing a book, you know, until I start that month, I don't, you know, I'm under no obligation. But once I start writing the book, that's it. I'm going to write that book. I'm not going to change it in the middle of the month, okay? None of your usual tricks, Will. Um, you've got to commit to it. And then you want to write another book? Fine, that, that can be later. And if I come up with 11 topics, uh, well, by you know by that point, it'll be December, right? So, you know, okay, start thinking about 2025 and revisit. And I didn't say I'd write any books in 2025, and I didn't say I'd write, you know, 11 or 12 books 2025. We'll revisit uh, for now, that's that's the rules. Those are the rules. Um, you know, the probably other reminders to self. Uh, but you know, the 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 you know, we'll fl follow flesh out the uh, Heinlein's five rules for writing. Also, um, I, I'll look those up and see if I can find those. Um, but basically, those those are the rules that you know you have to write. You have to write a lot. You have to finish what you write no uh, doing a bunch of drafts unless, you know, required by um, the publisher. And even then, uh, according to Harlan Ellison, you can refuse to make those changes in Harlan, Harlan Ellison fashion. Uh, and then you have to submit 
to a publisher and you have to keep submitting until it's published, okay? And I'm gonna be broad with my notion of publisher. I'll start with, you know, I'll probably start with MIT Press because uh, I have two editions of a book with them. There are others, Cambridge University Press has asked me, you know, if I had books. It, one of the things that's interesting is that if you're an academic and you go to conferences, the major conferences like ICFP or Popple, uh, you might, you know, often there'll be a booth there or like a table with academic publishers, you know, so MIT Press, Cambridge University Press, Springer, Elsevier, whatever. Uh, and often those, the, the people there may be like an acquisitions editor or the editor for computer science. And uh, they might, they might just email you and say, hey, I'm editor for MIT Press or I'm editor for Cambridge University Press for computer science and elect electrical engineering or whatever it is, uh, you know, would it be okay to meet for a few minutes um, and and that sort of thing? Uh, so so I've had a, a number of those sorts of conversations. Now, not a large number, but, you know, more than one. Um, and, and so I know that the academic publishers are always looking for books uh, and there just aren't that many academics who write books on certain topics. So it's just not... Like how many books are written on program synthesis right now? I know of one. <laughs> like literally there's one book I know of on program synthesis recently. Okay. So, um, you know, probably, you know, MIT Press, Cambridge University Press could also try doing, you know, depending on what it is, could be something like O'Reilly, maybe, or uh, what is the... Uh, What's the MEAP stuff from MEAP, you know, um, I forget the name of, of that, the publisher that does MEAP, or sort of they've got the, kind of the books as they're being written. Um, I don't know. As long as they'll let me keep it Creative Commons and it's on GitHub, you know, that that's fine. So those are the rules. Um, I have a call. Let's see, I've got a call in 11 minutes. Uh, well, how, what can we get done in 11 minutes? Well, let's start the book one. All right, 11 minutes is enough. I, I've got to go in six minutes, so I got six minutes. So let's let's uh, you know, let's move like we've got some, a purpose here. Um, you know what? Book dot uh, actually it shouldn't be book dot txt. Here we go. It's going to be book one. Well, I guess it could be called book.txt. We're in, we're in, uh, you know, we're in full. Okay. So I'm not going to do LaTeX. I'm going to just do plain text. Okay. Um, so maybe this is a, um, this has become, been promoted to a rule. So my guideline has been promoted to a rule. And I'm going to put this um, here. First draft of book is in plain text. Okay. And there's a reason for that rule. And the reason is I started writing a book on relational interpreters. That's the most recent project I've had. And I built all this infrastructure and you know, I, I had all sorts of really cool scripts so I could run all the tests and, you know, could generate and cross indexes and all sorts of things. I had all this amazing infrastructure. And then I got, you know, part of the way into the writing the book and I got stuck for things not having to do with infrastructure. I was like, well, all right, well, it's cool that I had the infrastructure, but I don't have a book. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to um, go very lightweight on that sort of thing. So it's just plain text, okay? So if I have a computer program, fine. If I have, you know, uh, formulas or whatever it is, well, we're gonna start off plain text and we're going to write a complete first draft, you know, complete first draft. And, you know, I'm pretty good at LaTeX and I'm probably too good at LaTeX in a way. I mean, I'm, I'm good at hacking LaTeX. I'm not actually good at LaTeX or tech, but I know how to do like Perl scripts with LaTeX and all sorts of abominations. So, you know, if I want to go the LaTeX way, but I don't know that I want to anyway, because these days there are things like Kindle, um, Markdown, HTML. There are people who, you know, in the past we've had people 
who couldn't read the the um, the book, the the reason schemer, you know, because they had some sort of sight impairment. Well, um, turned out that the LaTeX we did in the first edition was so complicated and had multiple levels of scripts and transformations that there wasn't a, just a plain text version of that book. So, you know, there was no way to actually give someone uh, sort of a clean copy. So, uh, so anyway, these days there's so many different formats for things. I just don't want to get stuck like that. Okay, so if I want to do a website or do a live code, something like that, I want something more more flexible, okay? So there we go. Those are the rules. Oh, I've got, uh, got three minutes. Okay, three minutes. I'm going to set the book. So let us three minute of book writing. All right. Okay, there we go. Strategies for idiosyncratic and creative thinking by William E. Bird. Okay, to do. Insert Creative Commons license here. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, GitHub. Okay. All right, we need to put this thing on GitHub. So, okay, see if I can create a GitHub repo real quick. <clears throat> All right. GitHub. Okay. All right, how do I do this thing? Uh, hmm? Hmm? Oh, new, okay. All right, let's do books. Will writes books. There we go. Books. Will writes books. Public, uh, get ignore. Don't, I'm not gonna worry about that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I had to read me. Choose a license. Okay. Creative. Okay. So, hmm. I don't know yet. Okay, I'm not gonna choose a license yet because I that that one I need to think about a little bit. Um, but let's create it. All right, and then let's create. Uh, what do we do? Check this out. Okay. CD GitHub. Git clone. CD well writes books. Okay. Make dear book one up. Oh, see. Perfect. Perfect timing. CD book one open. All right. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, programming languages. Well, we're on 13? Wait, where are we? Oh, books. Books, here we go. And yeah, let's just move this over. And just okay. Let's see. Hmm. Let's just take a peek real quick before I check it all in. Book topics. There we go. Here are my rules. All right, awesome. Okay, I think that's okay. So let us uh, go into this. Oh, wait. Eh, I think I'm confused about which directory I'm in. Will writes books. One, two, three, move it to here. Eh? All right, hold on a second. Oh, I can't move it because it's called book one. Uh, foo, 
All right, now I can move book one. Now I can move rules. Foo, go away. All right. Great. Get add rules. Read me book topics. Okay. And book one. Whoops. Um, maybe book one. Get add book. All right. Get status. Yeah, get rid of this DS store junk. Uh, okay, get uh, commit. Uh, first, first book in progress. All right, uh, time for my call. All right, see you all soon.